There we go. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Can everybody on Zoom there see the right thing now? Welcome to Dale Mead Church. Yeah. Uh, we actually see uh, the song, Holy Spirit, Thou Art Welcome in This Place. Oh, okay. Well, yours didn't go back then. It should have gone back. Sorry. Uh, what do you see now? Same. What do you see now? Same. Okay. Same. You're, you're one step ahead of us. So I moved it back, but you didn't go back. So I hope that it will go back. It will go forward when I want it to go forward. <laughs> so would you like to sing this week without music? And I will help lead you because I'll be singing very loud this week instead of quietly with the piano. Stand with me and sing and welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Come, omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in my heart. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in my heart. Come in with thy power and fill every part. Thou art welcome in my heart. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here in this place and in our hearts. And we look forward to what you have to say to us and how we can speak with you and share the deep things of our heart with you. Come and bless us today, we ask. Amen. You may be seated. Now, people on Zoom, do you see a new screen? No, we don't. Oh, no. Okay, well, I'm going to, I think I'm going to stop the share then. This is always a little tenuous. The people here all see the right thing. Well, what happens if I just do? Well, let's try it again. Dear God, please. You see a scripture verse now? Yes. Okay. I hope it will carry on yep. and working well for us. So today is the first Sunday of Advent. And the season of Advent brings us great hope and great promise. Each Sunday in Advent, we like to light a new candle for each week. And Ken is going to come and you're going to do that, Ken? Ken's going to come and he's going to light a candle for us. Come now would be great. <laughs> and light this one here. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. The first one is from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, and it talks about the fulfillment of promises. For in Christ, every one of God's promises is a yes. And for this reason, it is through him that we say the amen to the glory of God. Every one of God's promises is a yes. Now, I'm going on to a new slide, so I hope this works. People on Zoom, hopefully you can see Psalm 119, 49 to 50. And this is our petition to God. As the psalmist said, remember your word to your servant in which you have made me hope. This is my comfort in my distress, that your promise gives me life. And I pray today that for you, God's promise will give you life. 
That's what he promises to us. And the first verse that I read is very important because it reminds us that God is a fulfiller of promises. May he give you hope today. In line with that hope, we're going to sing that song this week that Joe suggested last week in memory of Ellie Taylor of I'll Fly Away and the hope and the promise that Ellie is in Christ's presence now singing with him. I have the music for that because I printed off a special sheet. I practiced a little bit, but I might be a little bit rusty and it's kind of a whippersnapper of a song. <laughs> so you forgive me if you just carry the song away, okay? Please stand. Can't really warm up again. He's forgotten to give us the words. I hope you know them. I can try and find them. <laughs> Thanks for that, assistant. Thank you, lovely assistant. And I would like to take this moment to thank my Zoom host and co-host because she always does a wonderful job. Just speak up like you did. Yeah, because they wouldn't have seen the words either. They were all silent. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were right. Yes, <laughs> that is a bird. And we really missed Ellie this morning yeah. playing the piano. You may be seated. I want to give you an opportunity to be able to share with the people that are around you. So I'd encourage you to make small groups safely and to share your re requests with each other. If you run out of requests, you could share a concept that you have of what Advent is because different people have different ideas. Some people aren't even aware too much about Advent. What do you know or what do you wanna share what's been meaningful for you? You can share that also in your small groups on Zoom and I'll try and be a little bit more diligent in watching my clock for seven minutes, okay? We'll see you again back together in just a few minutes. Okay. Good. Okay, we're going to come back together. I've been playing a little bit with the TV. I hope everything's going to be cooperative. Uh, I'd love to hear from each of your groups uh, things that you have to share about what we can pray for. And I know that you discussed who is going to report. So I know somebody's all right, Neil. You got the. Okay. Uh, prayers for Edna May Haley, her son, Glenn, uh, 
passed away this week. And they live just, or used to, just a mile and a half north of us here. Uh, prayer for Elaine again, and Evelyn and Daryl Winkler. Evelyn and Daryl Winkler? Winkler. Winkler. Okay. Neither one of their health is, uh, is very good right now. Okay. Thank you, Neil. Great job. Was that everybody there? Yep. Okay. Over on this side, let's start here at the front. Okay, we, we had a discussion about Advent and what it means to us. And we were just, none of us knew when it actually started with the light of the candles. And that would be the last time we can remember Advent being taught about in prior churches. But years and years ago, it didn't seem to be as. Um, in the forefront as it is now. Mm -hmm. The Bible reads. I don't remember ever lighting candles. We'll put it in as prayers. Prayer requests. Just want to pray for a mother and a daughter whose husband and, and young daughter were killed on the military mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, where were they killed? Mm -hmm. Where? On the car trail. Mm -hmm. no. um, you know, that, that was a pretty horrific accident for you. We're thankful for the weather. We are thankful that we were all safe yesterday in the very slick roads in Calgary and surrounding area. Can't hear any of that. Okay, so for those of you on Zoom who weren't able to hear, uh, Neil has asked for prayer for Edna May Haley. Uh, her son, Glenn, passed away this last week. He's also asked for prayer for Evelyn and Daryl Winkler for their health. Uh, and Liz and um, Pete and Elsie's group was asking for prayer for the mother and daughter who were killed on the cloud trail this last week in Calgary. Uh, and we're thankful for the weather. And there's one more group to report. We just wanted to pray for the Taylor family at the Mosque and the Elk. Um, Nelly, and also the legacy that she left in this church, evidently she was very involved with the music and always had an Advent program. And so that prompted us to say that Advent was also an opportunity for us to talk about the coming event of Christmas and what it means and what this really means. Mm -hmm. I also asked for prayer for some of our grandkids who need to know us. Great, thank you. So that prayer request was for Ellie Taylor's family in the loss of Ellie and remembering the legacy that she left here in music at the church and also asking for prayer for grandchildren of Arnie and Rosemary who need jobs. Uh, is somebody there from Zoom that would like to report on your group? Sure, Wes, I'd be delighted to. <clears throat> we uh, talked a little bit. Oh, first I wanted to mention that, that Kathleen had commented that she does not mind the technology chat challenges whatsoever. Uh, she's just happy to be here. And uh, the group certainly agreed with that. We spoke a little bit about Advent and, and um, the aspects of hope, peace, joy, and love. And Joan certainly mentioned that um, e even, even in our most challenging times, we are still able to find some moments of joy. Kathleen's example of that was when listening to a little girl at the, at the swimming pool whistling. And, uh, and of course, Advent being a, a time when we can, when, when God helps us get, get ready for Christmas itself. And Dale expressed his uh, extreme gratitude um, to God and uh, for providing self-giving love and the fact that he has so much pride for Celine and all of her, her many ac impressive accomplishments. Joan also commented about uh, Christmas bringing not just joy, but comfort and joy which is, is such a treat at Christmas. And we have prayer requests. Joan is asking for prayer requests for everybody praying from cancer. Uh, and that includes uh, Carrie Spruill and a neighbor and a brother-in-law and all the difficulties people uh, physically, spiritually, emotionally that people who, with cancer are suffering. And uh, Ralph is tremendously grateful for all the prayers. He is He gives uh, gratitude to God every day, and um, but he's especially grateful for the prayers for his um, 
trying to feel better. And Elaine uh, Thiessen has also asked us to pray for Becky, who's a friend of theirs uh, suffering with cancer, who Elaine's, Elaine and her family are also helping. Thank you. Much, Wanda. Um, let's pray together. And as we pray, let's remember that Advent really is a time of hope and that God will fulfill his promises. We don't pray in emptiness. We pray believing and having faith because of what God has already done. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the reminder that we have of what you have done through Jesus and that sending him here to earth was a promise. It was the fulfillment of many promises that someone would come and that in his coming, our lives can be changed. Thank you for the hope that we have because of the message that we know about the coming of Christ and what we will hear about it in the coming weeks and what we already know. That Jesus has come from you. He's come because of your promise to save us and that he has done a work that is greater than any of us could ever do that has opened up a door and a pathway for us into your kingdom. We pray, Lord, for those who are especially grieving because they have lost loved ones. We remember Ellie Taylor's family. We celebrate and imagine that Ellie must be up there playing on a heavenly piano and giving praise to you face to face. Thank you for all of the love that she has left behind and the joy that she created in so many hearts here in Dale Mead and for her love for telling the story of Christ, especially through Christmas and Advent. We pray that you would bring comfort to her family and that they would know that their mother, their wife, their sister, their grandmother was a woman that loved to serve you and loved to serve the church. Bless them, Lord, in their time of grief. We pray also too, Lord, for Edna May Haley, we ask for you to surround her in this tragic loss of her son. We pray that you would give her hope in a time that seems that it is very dark. Give her strength, Lord, to be able to wake up and get up each day. And I pray that she would see the sunrise and know, Lord, that you bring hope even in darkness, that your sun rises when it is dark. We pray too, Lord, for the family of the mother and the daughter that were killed in Calgary this last week. We pray that you would comfort them, husband and the other daughter. Pray, Lord, that you would bring hope in a time of great sadness. And I pray that there would be people surrounding them that would keep them protected and provided for and cared for in a tragic time. In this season, Lord, of challenge and difficulty that we are in, Advent brings to us that ray of hope. And we pray for that for people who are in ill health and who are suffering from disease and cancer and sickness. And we pray, Lord, that you would bring them especially hope. We remember Becky and Elaine. We remember also Lord Carrie Spruill. Also Ralph and Joan's neighbor and their brother-in-law. And we pray Lord that each of these people would receive hope from you in their challenging circumstances. May we also as people who are on the journey beside them be good companions for them and accompany them, be with them in their hardship, and let them know that they are not alone. Thank you for the promise, God, that in whatever we face, that we don't face it alone, that you are with us wherever we are, whatever our circumstances are, bringing us comfort and bringing us joy. And the message of 
hope, peace, and joy, and love in Advent, Lord. May we also be your instruments that bring these things to the people that are around us and not only receive it for ourselves, but pass that on. And we pray, Lord, for those who are looking for work that you will provide for them, that their needs might be met and that they would be able to make good use of what you have given them, that they would be good stewards in this life. Thank you for this beautiful day, for the weather that we can enjoy. But most of all, Lord, even when we feel like we are so restricted by the conditions that are around us, thank you for the opportunity for us to be able to gather, to communicate with each other, to talk to each other, to share ideas, to give hope to each other, whether that's by using technology and being connected through the internet or by being here in person so that we remember as human beings that we are not alone in what we face, but we even have each other. And may we share our concerns with each other so that we can pray for and encourage each other in Christ, which is our privilege because of what Jesus has done for us, bringing us together and reconciling us not only with each other, but also with you, our Father. Amen. Wes, can you hear me? Yes. I humbly apologize. I had meant to also say that um, just as our prayer group was closing, Elaine Thiessen was about to say something about Advent. And uh, I was just wondering if we could just take a moment to hear Elaine's comments about Advent. Of course. And I have something to say also at the end. Go ahead, Jen, you go first. Well, in those prayers for people that are suffering from cancer, um, our utmost uh, prayers for Daryl and Evelyn Winkler, who is Doug's mother and dad. Um, Evelyn has uh, cancer and also a heart problem, and it's a very difficult time. And uh, Daryl's suffering from dementia, so if you could give special prayers for them this week as Evelyn goes through treatments. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know, Joan. Elaine? I, I was just going to share that quite often Advent is a time that the world doesn't really make sense to everybody. And right now we're in a season when almost globally there are things that just don't make sense. And we come back to these four weeks of focusing on a piece of our faith that helps us to trust that God can make sense of everything and that our hope and our leaning on him will bring us to a, a state, an inner state of peace as we let him make sense of the world. Thank you so much. Let me see if this is going to let me. Um, <coughs> I have problems when I move my cursor with this screen and that's. we go. Can you see that now on Zoom? Does it say Advent poem? No, it doesn't. We have Dale Mead Church. Does it say Advent poem now? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. 
Uh, this is not going to work very well. Okay, I'm going to stop this. Still hear me in Zoom? We hear you. If they can hear me or not. We hear you. Yeah, we hear you. Wes. Okay, good. Thanks, Ralph. Okay, so I've just unplugged the TV. Uh, I'll plug it back in when I go to the sermon, I think. Uh, my apologies for this, trying to make this work well. I'm frustrated. Um, last week, I shared with you a book of David Roper's. I've also had the joy of being able to take some poems that my uncle wrote over many, many years and collect them together into an anthology and publish them. I'm just waiting for the books to arrive from the printer. Uh, but he wrote almost every year an Advent poem for the Advent season for many, many years. I don't know when he started. I don't know why he started. Uh, but the family then would look forward to his Advent poetry. Uh, and so I wanted to share one of those poems with you today. It's very brief. It's very, it's only four lines and four stanzas and each line is very short. Uh, but the whole point of the poetry is to bring to mind images that might then allow you to be able to interact with those thoughts and make the poetry come alive for you, for what it means for you. There isn't necessarily anything specific that you must understand from it, but it gives you an opportunity to interact with the theme now of Advent. This particular poem he entitled, Mystery. What was is now because somehow God came. Through birth by maid, our earth to aid, reclaim. To beast and bird, the feast deferred, proclaim. For man from sin now can come in to peace. I'm going to invite my mother to come and read our scripture for today, which is from Luke chapter 1, verses 5 to 25. She was the one who volunteered. And while she's doing that, I'm going to try and get the TV working again. The reading of the word of the Lord. Bye. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zachariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of the incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am a very old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. 
I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to you to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, after this his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. The reading of the word of the Lord. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Is uh, can you see on Zoom there Zechariah's encounter? Yes, yeah. that's what we see. Okay. And can you hear all right? Yes, we hear well. Okay, thank you. That was quite a story of Zechariah. It's interesting to go back and read it several times, because every time you read it, like most of scripture, as you read, every time you read, a new detail pops up to you and means something different. Um, in Advent, oftentimes uh, for these four Sundays, uh, a minister will look for some way of being able to share four themes. And often they are centered around the words of peace, hope, love, and joy. This year in Advent, I've decided to be able to focus on four songs of scripture. And the first one is traditionally in the church recognized as the second of the four songs of Advent, because they say the first one is the first song that happened chronologically, which is Mary's song. But we're going to talk about Mary's song next week, because although Mary's song happened before Zechariah's song, the story of Zechariah began before the story of Mary, because the angel came to Zechariah to tell Zechariah that his old wife, and he himself was old, was going to have a baby. She had been barren. And so with this message from the angel, in my mind, this is the beginning of the Advent season. But Zechariah's song doesn't come until almost 10 months later, because his song is sung when Zechariah's wife, Elizabeth's son, John, is born. And this person who is born, John, we know better as John the Baptist. And he is the one who prepares the way for the Messiah in his ministry at that time. And so John comes just a few months before Jesus. And there is an encounter that Elizabeth and Mary have together when they're both pregnant. And Mary goes to visit Elizabeth. And when she arrives at Elizabeth's house, the baby in her womb, Jesus, begins to move quite rapidly. And Mary interprets that as the joy that Jesus ex is experiencing because he has come close to his roommate, John. Although they don't share the same womb, they're born at the same time. They are blood cousins, but John is also the prophet who's coming before Jesus to prepare the way for him. And so I just want to focus a little bit on what happened for Zechariah and his song. The angel Gabriel brings this message from God announcing the coming of John the Baptist. 
the announcement was made in a very holy place. The angel came to John while he was inside the temple offering incense. Now I come and I preach here every single week, but Zechariah doesn't offer incense every week. It's a very, very special opportunity that for some people only happened once in a lifetime. His lot got drawn. He was from the family of Abijah. So he was one of many, many priests living in Jerusalem, and it was his turn. And he had no idea before this encounter that something was going to happen while he was offering incense on the altar. And the angel came and gave him this message. Now, Jordan said to me earlier in the service, that's a lot of power that you have there with that remote control. You just push that button and you mute the television. And I said, yes, this is a very important theme coming up in today's message, because this is what happened to Zechariah. The angel, Gabriel, pushed his mute button. It's very easy for us to do that for a television, but have you ever tried to push a mute button on a person? <laughs> I'm sure there are a few you would like to. <laughs> Uh, and, and I don't think Zechariah was expecting this, but imagine being there in the temple and the angel comes to him and tells him news that he is, in, it's incredulous. He cannot believe this, that my wife, my barren wife, we waited for so long to have children and now we've resigned ourselves to the fact that she's not going to have a child and this angel appears to me. And the first thing, of course, is he is afraid and then he doesn't believe now, if Zechariah had believed, his response would have been something like, oh, may it be done to us according to your word, because this is typically what people, as we read in scripture, would respond when they believed the message that was coming to him. I'm sure Zechariah had never seen an angel before, and he was an old man. I'm surprised he didn't have a heart attack, obviously eating lots of olive oil, and maybe good oatmeal, I don't know, his cholesterol level must be down. But he was able to hear the news, but he didn't believe it. And he responded in such a way that expressed his disbelief by saying, how could this be? How is it possible? And the angel Gabriel then announces who he is. Because obviously, if Zechariah had known who this angel was, he wouldn't have disbelieved because the source would have been credible in Zechariah's mind. And he said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. And you can also, you can, you can hear the words in parentheses. How dare you question what this message is that God is sending to you, that you wouldn't believe this. And I was sent, Gabriel says, to speak this to you. But because you haven't believed, you will be mute and unable to speak. And Gabriel pushed his mute button. And Zechariah comes out of the temple. What did the people think? He went in to offer incense and he was perfectly fine. And now he comes out and he's unable to speak. And he stayed that way for more than nine months because Elizabeth had not yet conceived and his speech did not come back to him until after the birth of John. And we didn't get to that aspect of the story, but I want to touch on it a little bit here because when John was born, there was discussion about what his name was going to be. And Elizabeth said that we're going to call him John. Everybody, like you can imagine, everybody in the family is going like this, John, 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 John. What is this John? There's nobody in the family named John. You never give a child a name that's not from your family. And so they turn to Zechariah, who still has not said a word since that day. He went into the temple to offer incense. And he motions that he wants a tablet to write on. And on the tablet, he writes, his name is John. And all of a sudden, Zechariah can speak again. And I think the people around him realize how miraculous this really is. 
And his name John comes from the Greek, which means Jehovah is a gracious giver. But this name is of Hebrew origin, really. Jehovah has graced or Jehovah has bestowed. And as I mentioned, it was a name that was not in Zechariah and Elizabeth's family. And so in choosing to name their child John, they were being obedient to the word of the angel that God had sent. There are many Johns in biblical history, the Hebrew name also that are known as priests, as captains, one as a prince, and also the name of a mighty warrior. And so there was nothing wrong with the name of John, only that it was very foreign to Zechariah and Elizabeth's family. This is the song of Zechariah, the song that he sings after John is born. And I'm going to read it to you. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And I'm just going to pause there because this phrase horn of salvation only happens in scripture three times here in John and then twice in the Old Testament. One is in Psalms and one is in Samuel where David is talking about God being his horn of salvation. Now remember that Zechariah was offering incense on the altar in the temple. These are incense altars that come from Palestine, one from the ones on the left are from Ekron, and the ones on the right are from a place called Mikne. And you can see that there is a place for incense, even the one on the far right, you can still see some of the soot markings from the burning incense that was on that altar. But I want you to notice that every single one of these altars that they found either has horns on it or has a rim around the edge of it. And the horns on the altar are a sign of strength. And so when Zechariah says he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, he's talking about the strength that Jesus brings because Jesus is a direct descendant from David. So he comes from the house of David. As he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. You know, music is very powerful. When people think of music, especially Christmas, they often think of their favorite Christmas carols and Christmas songs. And we use music to express our emotion. And for the Israelites, this was also very powerful. This is a song that Zechariah sang to be able to express the emotions that were deeply inside of him, of what he understood God was going to do. He promises here or explains here in his song that God is bringing salvation to them, not only from their enemies, but also from the hand of all who hate them. He also says that they are being dealt with mercifully, that God remembers his covenant. And so this gift of John is a fulfillment for Zechariah of the promises that God made many years ago, not just for John, but for all of John's people. And that also applies to us, that the coming of John is the fulfillment of promises 
that God extends to us. The child goes before the Lord to prepare the way for him. And the Lord's role is to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God. And essentially, this is the story of Christmas that we get right at the very beginning with Zechariah's song. Is that God, in his tender mercy, is telling us about the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of our sins. That our sins will be forgiven. That's what Zechariah was in the temple for to advocate on behalf of the people bringing incense to God to lift up his name because of God's tender mercy towards us. And this is the fulfillment of that in the birth of Zechariah's own son, John the Baptist, the forerunner of our Messiah, who comes to bring us the forgiveness of our sins. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we cannot give thanks enough or praise enough for your merciful compassion. That you turn to us when we have turned away from you. That you make known to us things that we should know when we have turned our backs on you. That you reach out to us when we are dirty and you make us clean by taking away our sins. May we, like Zechariah, sing to you a song of praise, a song that extols you as the one and only one who is able to forgive sin and to wipe it away. Thank you for the hope that we receive, that we hear about through the coming of John the Baptist, who prepares the way for the Messiah, for Jesus the Christ. And may we, as we enter now into the Advent season, begin to prepare a place for room for Jesus and for that mercy that you sent, speaking of the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a song that I wanted to play for you, but I'm going to put it in the newsletter and you can listen to it on YouTube. It's called Zechariah's Song and it comes from another church in the United States. It was a great um, encouragement to me. And there are links that I will put to several other Advent type songs that relate to uh, this season that we've entered into now. So I hope that you enjoy those links and those songs. And you can use them if you want to as meditations during this week for the season of Advent. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I don't have any specific announcements other than what we've shared last week. If you want to communicate with Lori or with Rhonda your preference for when you come to the Christmas Eve service, we must make some special accommodations because we expect more people will want to come than what we usually have on a Sunday morning and we need to make sure that we don't overseed, exceed our capacity. Wanda, are there any other announcements that you are aware of? Uh, no, but thanks so much for that. Exactly that, we're wanting to plan for Christmas. So um, that's perfect. Thanks so much, Wes. You do have another announcement, Wes. Oh, please remind friend? me. Yes. Um, we talked about the request for a service that acknowledges those who have passed and lost children. And we decided we would do it, but we aren't sure if we're doing it on Zoom or in person. And if it's in person, we'll try to include Zoom. So some feedback, if you would like it on Zoom alone, um, would be helpful. Feedback on that. Thank you so much. Please feel free to get back in touch with either myself or with Elaine about your preference if you would like to participate in that service and we can do it in the church and include Zoom or we can do it only on Zoom as well. Okay. We 
maybe just the times that we were thinking of for Christmas Eve? Okay, so for the Christmas Eve options, we were thinking of the first service at 3.30, and it would be about a 45-minute service running until about 4.15. We're hoping to have a bonfire outside, and then we would have the second service, I think we said at 5, and then it would be over at about 5.45. Sunset is at 4.32 on Christmas Eve this year. So that will give you an idea of when it will be dark. So the 5 o'clock service, it will be getting dark as the service begins. Okay, thank you, Lori. Now, before you go, may I give you this benediction? Please stand for the benediction. May God Almighty, who is the one who sent Gabriel to explain to Zechariah the hope that would come in an incredible promise, be the one who also speaks to you through his angels and his Holy Spirit, of the promises that he gives to you that will give you hope in your time of need. Go in hope. Amen. Okay, thank you. I will correct that. If you stop the recording now, Wes, that's helpful. I can't stop it.